Okay, so last time I did memory mapped files and some memory managed memory items in support for the thing that happened before then, which was for the binary importer. That's already so the memory map stuff is merged into mainline. And I've rebased the current branch on top of that. So at this point, I can now go into doing the thing that halted me last time, which was uh, for the importer of uh, binary importer, which was doing the external file, this thing right here. Uh, which was going to be the last thing. I also kind of have to re uh, base this entire like binary importer to use a memory mapped file instead of um, you know j right, right now up here I think it's doing f reads all over the place, which you know do doesn't have to happen anymore. And actually, if I think about it, same thing for YAML, wouldn't it? Maybe. Because the importer would be reading, loading a file. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Because it is very possible that I may just want to memory map a file and just reuse. Ah, not really, actually. Because these all it, files are all very individual, so it doesn't actually matter too much. Maybe, no, 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 no. Focus on binary importer first. So I need this. I need to find the exact uh, footprint declaration format of this, whatever. <laughs> the signature, there we go. So we got find external file, which is for IDX importer, importer. We're gonna have a char called star, which is still a P path, I guess, or name that's inside. That you know, the... yeah, because the path is still going to be embedded into the binary file. I mean, it's basically just points to an index instead of an actual file location, but. No, manage memory, whatever. Memory. That's what it's going to be. Uh, I can grab the starting stuff from here. Lovely. Down here. Okay. Anything else I need to do? Not to do with that, but what I am going to do instead is I'm going to make it a... file path so I need to uh, I need to open that in um, managed memory so let me go back it's been a couple weeks since I've done this now remapped file so I need to include this I need that uh, that includes memory the managed memory as well so I can do that I need to do <clears throat> results. Result equals both create memory map file moment, which is based on the importer. The uh, just path dot string dot c string so that msvc is happy, and I need the bench memory so. Do that memory do that actually kind of that's it file file data Remember that file, um, file data. I guess PFA is file data for the moment. Ah, map file equals that. Great, whatever. If that, okay, so we need to have like down here a thing like.
something like this, so that I can clean up. If result of value not equal to success, go to x failed. Da, 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 da. But if result dot value yes and I want to make sure map file if no handle then I will do code in map decrement use That'll automatically destroy it. Uh, not otherwise, I want to do else. E managed memory equals map file. That's actually not right, is it? That's not going to be right. Um, because that's going to be the entirety of the file. That's not going to be pointing to the, the subsection of the file that I'm, I want to return as a result. So I need to create like another type that like maps a subset, like fo create memory manage subset, subset man manage memories, you know. I need to create a new type or a new subtype or another thing that uses that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. Okay. Regardless, for the moment, we're here, we're doing this. I'll figure this out in a moment. Uh how how do I write out the stuff? Export resource. Resource data, binary export. Is it here? Binary key index. Okay. Is this it? Data offset. Da, 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 da. This is the binary key. No. Oh, it's resource binary key. Not quite. On a data. External resources. Here we go. This is the section I'm interested in. Triple file offset equals. So that's the total. Okay. For each external file, find the file, get the data size, add the file export to it. Okay. So these are index locations. Okay. So in P importer file header, I could have something along the lines file data offset. I think that's it. File Yeah. This is okay, so this is the file data offset. Um, do I have like a thing where I say the number of these things? I may need to add it if I don't. It does indeed look like I just don't. So I go through the file export list, but I don't actually say how many of them there are. So that's a that's a mistake I gotta rectify on this side. And then I have the data afterwards. Okay. And the total file offset is the total written plus file export index size, which I don't actually know ahead of time unless I do. I only do because of this, but I don't actually write it out. 
Okay. So first things first, plus size of the length of the 2t. I need to plus the size of this index. Or hold on. Total file offset, data size, string length. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, I need a... Size of each entry is... File offset plus data size plus... Size of U32 underscore T, that's great, plus that. Okay. Total written equals FTL of the current location. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, what I can actually just do is get rid of this and say, hey, you know, this is. Wait, do I not actually file header data? Do I not actually set it? Do I write anything up to this point? Is there an F read or what? What? F write, sorry. No, there's not an F write between in between here and there. Okay. So that is that. I gotta clean this up. Okay, that that. That's a caps lock. Print out the number of files. So it's that plus Okay, plus that. So I need a un t um, Then files equals file export list dot size. That's great. And we want to f write that. And um, files. One. size of yeah size of that times one uh p l pot great then we have the, okay so with that this is going to be down up to file off data also. so we're going to this point um okay first actually first of all open or get void, sorry, sorry. What do I, and E132. File data. File. And e file data, and then we're going to grab set the uh, file size. Return all that. Okay, now we can get to this. We want to say, hey, p file data plus equals this. I can just say like. like that times or something like that um stand byte I just say that 
it's just a void star, okay? It's just that. Be happy. Okay. Now we say standard byte moved up by that many times, that many bytes. In AT, that'll work. It's also a single byte. Okay. Hmm. Do I though? Okay, whatever. Uh, read. We can read the read the map. Now. So starting with uh, you want thirty two t num files is whatever it doesn't really matter what we want to do is read no we don't even want to read we could just we could just literally read the memory as is so star equals p file data just that right This is not going to work because of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, if we're here, we just return result, right? Straight up. At the moment, I think. Because it won't, that won't exist. So let's actually see if I can actually do this and come back to this point. I need to change up the application to hit that. Around here, I need to um, external data result equals oh. mm, I'm at importer get external get well. Find external file. I don't have a good idea on one of these. I need one right now. We'll say it's. I don't actually have any of those. Okay, uh, resource. I'm looking for a mesh. Uh, this. Why not? And if okay, that should fire off and then get us into here. Uh, well, there first and then to here, which is the interesting thing. So first of all, let's make sure I can actually, I know how many of these things there are. Then I'll read it on, read it on the other side. Okay. So we have eight files. Cool. Moving on to this side, we have Okay, yeah, that's cool. Eight files. Perfect. Absolutely. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, I don't have to go through the F read and stuff. I could just literally point to it and just automate just read it immediately. This actually makes things so many things way easier. I could even do this, maybe do the same thing when I'm writing stuff out as well. I can imagine. Whatever, I have the number of files. So now I want to go through four. Realistically, I'd actually want to do this when I'm opening the file at first and get like a map of what's available everywhere so I don't have to keep coming back to the file as quickly. Maybe. Maybe. Or, hmm, maybe, whatever. <clears throat> uh, 
um, less than star non files. I can even do const that const so I know like it's not changing while I'm doing this. So I can make that assumption at least. This is read only stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I can really do a bunch of cool little things. But for each of these, I'm going to be reading a number of things. So first of all, <clears throat> star equals, okay. Hmm. Maybe I'll put, yeah, uh, maybe. Hmm. CDUM files, P file data. So what I want to do is P file data. Plus equals size of the input TT at the moment. Something like that. And then I say you want to put the star P data size equals So look, I don't have a great way to deal with like moving the pointer around quite yet. Do this again. Okay, that's great. And then we're going to say like the this is however much that is. Okay. That string view is oh, this is just a string view. So I can actually just do like the starting point, right? One of these is the starting point and the ending point. So char that with the length. Okay, I can do that. That's that. Great. And that's not like that. I think. So let's have a look at what we got going on over here and then we'll kind of see what it comes out to this side. Cool. Yes. Okay. I get it. You're on. You got a matching. Uh... Okay. Okay. File export list. Cube Tower 97.212. Sphere Tower 81.420. Great. Let's come to this side. Now we have. He filed data, which is good. So that's the string. The string becomes cube tower FBX. Hmm. 
That didn't quite work. I'm moving the pointer up each time, right? Okay, so p file data is at b41, so that's what here. b45, great. So p file offset is 3188. And b45. P data size. Why is it always no? Oh, right. Yes. Yes, of course. Yeah, okay. That makes a bit more sense. Okay, p file data, 13, whatever. String length, 13. Data size 97 to 12. That leaves string to become cube tower FBX. That's correct. Here comes sphere tower. No. Oh, right, 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 right. P file data needs to move up by this many characters. Cube tower. Sphere tower. Okay. P data size is 81. Yes. Offset don't care. String length 15. Okay. Good. We're making good progress here. So what I want to do is if uh, string equals the path. Doesn't match. Then we found what we want. Now I want to do a memory mapped file where, like, can I do an offset with? No, I don't do an offset with that, do I? No. Memory manage memory. Okay. Hmm. What would I need to do? Uh, because I want to, I I want to return a managed memory, but I it can't be like the full file. It needs to be a subset. So I need to basically create. Um. It needs to be linked as well with the whatever parent. So, you know, basically like a shared pointer, almost, almost. So result set both dates. And we subset something like this. So it'll be based on some managed memory. Size B for data size. Uh, 
data offset, data size, and then something like this. Uh, this I'll, I guess I'll just leave it in part of this as well, because this is just, I don't need to clean up because that's going to like link back to this. Don't need meta, metadata because that links back to this as well. So rolling back down to here, managed memory. Want to make a you know basically one of these that include that on a namespace. I'm gonna have atomic new atomic no would I have atomic yeah I would have atomic I need to use count p data data size use count cleanup function I don't need that. Um, Hmm. Technically, I do. It's just an integrated one. Yeah. Very much like memory map file, isn't it? Very much like this, isn't it? Yeah. Which is C based. Yeah, okay. Well, that was the, oh, manage memory, parent memory, parent managed memory. Okay. That's kind of it. Okay. Take that out. We're going to have the void. This it's that we're going to have it's going to be basically become this. I need to create that. Yeah. I'm assuming that this parent memory is real. And that I can add a thing to check like if these parameters will work given what's available, I think. Metadata. Something like that. Okay. And then what happens when this is cleaned up, we're just going to go through like go oh, managed memory decrement use. Uh, uh P manage subset data set. Just a one line basically. It's just it's basically a Almost like a pass through. Actually, couldn't I just do no? Because it's a void star. Maybe I. It probably just compiles down to nothing, anyways. No point in getting 
called wrapped up in it. So parent data, yeah, size. Get data, which is parent memory data that doesn't actually matter too much. Parent data size. If data plus data size is greater than parent data size, and I need to fix up size T versus UN32 as well. That much is also obvious. Now I need to return something else that's firm. Um, oh, error. One's parent. Memory subset of runs parent. That is a new result. I will add to this up there and in here. XML down here, turn off formatting for this file. That'll add it here and here. And here, okay, return that. Otherwise, we're basically good to go at this point. It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. Results. There's nothing to clean up, so I could just return go create managed memory, which is the parent data plus You know what? What I'll I'll just do it right here. You and he. plus equals data offset. So we pass that in. We're gonna give in data size. And they give the cleanup function, which is this metadata is. Oh, did I? I need to create this, don't I? Oh, no, no. Yes, I do need to create this. Metadata equals dot equals parent memory. Just do that.
because of that. Plus and end key managed memory. Pass that around. So that is not enough. Why? Or do I just not have this? Okay. So that return should start with one. And then this will link back to that. This will decrement that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so now I need to actually use this. Create memory subset where we're using the map file. The data offset is the total data offset, I believe. So it's star p file offset, star p data sot, and we pass through p managed memory. That's the thing we want to try to do. We want to try to return this. Result that. And then break out, I think. We do this, we break out. If this failed, then that'll work as expected. Yeah, okay. Speed, speed run that. Okay, let's see what we can do then, shall we? So I want to go to the application, it's about here. And I want to see. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. I, I tried to step out of the main application, which meant... Uh, Get me in here. Okay. We're going to do this. We're going to find the hall. We're actually going to do it. Got the data. That's great. So we have this mapped file, which if I just go inside and check. Oh, no. When I do this, I need to increment. Okay. If result dot is for success, then I need to increment parent memory. I need to increment its use and then return result. And I should still have memory because it was passed into me. This the, whoever called me has a reference to it, so he's not. Yeah, that makes more sense. And this subset thing has its own counters. Okay, uh, going back in again. That's great. Go inside. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, we're inside. Good, good, good. So I'm assuming. What am I looking for? Shaders, simple bone mesh. We're looking for a vertex shader. All right. Okay, this should be it. We go inside, great. 
Got that? Great. All right, data size. We have a data offset of that and a data size of that. We're inside of this. Our data size is very large. This plus this is certainly smaller than that. So we're good for that. Parent data plus equals data offset. Ooh, the pointer. Yeah, the pointer's moving. Okay, great. Metadata. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. That's great. Results is successful. So we're gonna go inside, we're gonna increment parent. Who is currently sitting at a use count of one, he goes up to two. And then we're out of here. That is the thing being returned. That's great. No matter what happens, this could happen. Whether we succeed or fail. Whether or not I'm keeping this file is based on... Turn formatting back on. Whether or not I'm keeping this file is based on whether I got anything else out of it right now. Rather than keeping that on. So... Okay. Got it, got it, got it. Put a decrement use. We go in. So we're decrementing the use of this thing, which is great. So we're going to go inside of this, which means we're going inside of here. Means we're going inside of this. Sorry, what? Whoa, 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 yeah, no, wrong thing, wrong thing. Not too many things open. Go away, go away. Okay, yeah, 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 no, no, this isn't happening at all. It's not the map file we care about. It's this thing that we already put, we already plugged in. That's what we care about. Whew, okay. This is the subset. We're going inside. Managed memory. We're going to do that. That's great. Cleanup man. Yes. Here we go. So now we're decrementing her parent. which then gets us to the memory map file. Okay. Then we get out clean, right? Nice and clean, great. You Got any memory leaks going on? Yes, we do. Of course we do. So it just kind of reaches here and then it gets lost in the shared object. Okay. This is why I created the third option in here, which is to... Link time plugins. So rather than pulling in the plugins at runtime, I can now bring them in. I can link them right at the beginning. 
so that I can actually like rerun this and if it's all is well, I should actually be able to get like much more detailed information to uh, like it'll basically be like it was loaded at well at link time. It linked was linked at link time. So I'm sure I can get this information now. Right. Plus, you know, if there's some people who want to like need to link everything together because there's going to be no option for runtime stuff for such as on mobile, I guess. That's also a use case. And there we go. So I've got YAML stuff. What am I doing with extra YAML stuff? I'm sorry, what? Uh -huh. Um, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Very odd. 240 bytes and three objects, okay. 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 What I'll, I'll come back to the the YAML reads in a moment. Is there, is there anything from the binaries? No. Wait. No YAML. YAML. It's all just YAML stuff. Okay. If I do it really quickly, there's stuff in YAML. Okay. So something is going on on the YAML side. But if I wait for, um, oh no, I did do a test save run, right? Do it again. Okay. It's just YAML stuff. Reading the binary stuff is absolutely fine. All right. All right. So the question is now, but what would happen if I was to use this as a file to read now instead? So what what if I, you know, test save, that's great. Copy this into data and just kind of have it here and call this the data A. What horrifying discoveries will I encounter? Hmm? Um, didn't build? What's going on? What's going on here? No rule to make tire. Oh, because the shader's gone because they were part of that. I guess. Hold on. What? Wait. What? Why? Okay, hold on. If I do this, it should just clear them out because they're no longer, yeah, they no longer exist. Okay. Great. It's one hell of a crazy value, but I will accept it. So we have something going wrong here. Okay, cool. Let's actually try to load it. So this is set by the persistent system. There's two of them. We have two of them. That's great. We have, can I actually see them? Dependency importers. I don't actually, they've been created. The data A, the data B. Okay. Can I actually go in and, uh, yes.
So the first one is the pen is the A one. This is the binary one, which would be here. We've got a path reader. We're trying right here. Okay, okay. Trying to find the file first. Oh, then we we found it first off, I guess. So we're going to try to create the importer, which first of all tries this. This is the data A, right? Oh, no, it's just persistent. Right, right, right. This is, yes, 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 yes. This makes sense. We get, right, right, right. It's the second time through that we care about. Yeah, well, now we're inside of here. Now we're going inside of here. Yes, okay. The data, oh, damn it. First time through, the persistent one. Second time through, it's the one we care about. Okay. Tries YAML, it fails. Tries binary, great. We got it, we got it, we got it. It's a regular file, that's what we care about. It's a file header, we can read the file. Header, right, right, right. Creating the new importer. The path, the group, file header, we set the name to be that. P new importer, the data A. Path is that. We return success. Created it, great. We have the importer. We know that. We can get out of this. Get out of this. Okay. So, first one. We're here. We're here. We're going to fail in here, is it? Okay. We're here. We're here. We're going inside. That's great. There shouldn't be anything returned out of here. Again, this needs to be converted to use a memory mapped file instead. Fail to open file. <clears throat> you're you're right about that. It shouldn't, because it's not that. It's a uh, path. Oh, screen. A C string. That's the file that you're supposed to be opening. Can I check any F or F opens? Path. Path, 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 path. Okay. Where are we failing now? Could not find transitive dependency the data A for the data A. Really? Could not find transitive dependency the data A for the data A. Oh, because I'm exporting the... Uh, right. Where am I doing the export? That's a great question. Or... No, I'm... Exporters here, right?
Yeah, okay. Um... Yeah, because I got a mixture of stuff I'm exporting instead of what I should really be doing. So, let me think on how to do this well. Uh, g give me a moment to grab a fresh drink. BRB. Okay, so, uh, yes, going back to... What I'm going to do is rather than export... Uh, do this kind of mixed export thing what i'm going to do to be able to actually export the data a is i'm just going to temporarily import it and re-export it import it from yaml export it as binary like just just that by itself as if it was the persistent like the top level um item and then re-import that that's that's going to have to be how it goes so to start with let's move the data a here do that great we're going to rename this back to the original rate. Okay, so what was going on here? New importer. Okay, where's the exporter? First, here's the exporters. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go up and import stuff first. If I can find... Where is it? It's got to be up here somewhere. Deinitialize, initialize. It's not too much, is it? Initialize, basic functionality, settings, state. Here we go. Yeah, it's just this. This is it. All right. And this is going into a new what? Just, yeah, okay. Just one of those pointers. Fine. We'll do it that way. So, do, 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 do. import just a single item. I search paths. Where is this? Is only there. Um, <clears throat> dang, that's not great. Okay, I need to move that into the main application. Header, which is down here. Okay, it's going to become part of this. So I, O, I guess, variables. I'll just kind of put it here. Search paths, that's great. So search paths, put that there. Remove it from here because instead search paths is no longer here. Okay, brings me back down to here. We're going to have to return. Okay, yeah, we're just going to say. The data A, we're doing that, That's great. Do that, okay. Stub what? out of here then what we're going to do is we're going to get the exporter we're going to put oh yeah put that in then we're going to export we're going to re-export that basically right away and then we're going to delete it or how do I actually delete a simulation? This must be one of the maybe I already converted it to be kind of We destroy it, and we're going to do this. So it's going to test save, or rather the data A. 
which is going to be the binary one I can't remember. Or just just test save. Just test save. Does that work? That's a great question. Let's find out. Do this again so it can find the uh, shaders again. Okay, great. We do that. I'm going to run through once at least. Nope. Okay. We've got a mutex lock or a me. Okay. In a unique lock in here. P indexes sync. Okay. Curious. No, that's because. Yeah, because of that. Um, we just do this all the time now, right? Technically, I would be going... Yeah, yeah, I should... Oh, no, I'd have to go through all of them, wouldn't I? Hmm. Okay, that's going to be fun. Figure out later. But for the moment, just focus on this. Rerun. Run, save, you... Yeah. Not quite. We go inside the exporter, we just die right here. Why? Steg fault. The binary key map is empty. Why is binary key map empty? Is it just nothing? If there's actually stuff to write out, write it out. Otherwise, don't. Okay, yeah, see, this is um, a bunch of things I'm going to have to actually, when I add the tests, I'll sort out a bunch of stuff like that. For the moment, I just want to make sure that I can get the general case. Ooh, right, very close. <clears throat> I was re-importing stuff this time, I guess. Or not. Because this is the component count, there's a component. Of very large, okay. Well, that's different. If there's no, I guess, stuff, no component data, it fails horribly. Total data size becomes what? 25. I mean, 25 bytes, there's just nothing there. Is there's no key length. We get out of... Yeah, we're... Hmm. If there's no keys and there's no data, and we don't do any of this,
or something. Skip that, skip that. This will also be skipped. Yeah, because there's no. Total data size is 25, which is. Twenty-three. That's not right. There's no components being thrown out. Why is there data? Why? I'm screwing something up. What? I'm writing out the number of binary keys. There's no keys, then there should be no data, right? Then it's supposed to just go onto this. What component entity sets? Should be no component here. There's a render mesh, I guess, which would then leave something here to actually be done. Okay. But there's no binary keys. There's nothing registered. Am I just writing stuff out because I can? I don't know why this even exists here. That's a mystery I'm going to solve later. Okay. So then, yeah, it just... It's writing this stuff out, which it shouldn't be doing. So that's not great. Let's do this. This is how it should be going for the moment. Two, great. We're gonna skip, we're gonna fail somewhere else. That's fine. IMAX importer get resource create info. It's just, that's not so great. Resource binary keys, great. We're in here. We got a key count of whatever. A key length of 56, good. Key map, great. We've got a key that is that, great. Okay, whatever. We move on. Got the keys. Go ahead and move on down here. This is the resource we're looking for, which it is not. Hmm. 
Am I missing something? I'm missing... When I exported it, hold on. When I exported it, it was exported as the... What was it? It was exported as that type, wasn't it? Hmm, yeah, it was exported as a persistent, which means, and it was raw, so it's like the, you know, it's up near the uh, top range of uh, 0 by 1111 one, 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 or, you know, 5 or whatever the, the top group value is. It's it's a high-end group. That's why the values are so off right now. Because I don't have a good mechanism for writing out the entity resource IDs yet in binary. I'm just doing them, them verbatim. So, um, can I do this? Oh. What do I do about this? I don't really have a great idea for because <clears throat> for YAML, it's easy to like be able to specify or not specify like the index ID and then the group ID kind of thing. That's easy to do. Let's find an example. Group ID and index ID. That's easy to do. But when I'm talking about binary, it's not like i could just remove that and it's like you know instead of group zero now it's part of the persistent group that's fine that's easy to do there can't really do that for binary unless no i can't do that either um i can't easily segregate the groups because the the data contained in the groups may also like may um talk about a uh reference i objects in a different group as well so What I'm going to do is groups are currently, <clears throat> I got to split them up. I got to do a proper split where somewhere up here for fo ECS, libs, YAML, I don't have a good export for that, do I? It would have to be part of this, okay. Because right now, okay, let me go actually just straight to the exporter. Close that, close that, close that, close that. Exporting. When I am exporting that isn't going to work. I need to export. How? Just split it up, split it up into two UN 32s or you went eight and you went 32. Quite possibly. Hmm. You went, yeah, you went 16 and you went 32 or two sixty fours if I want to be bored. I don't know. Or two, so I can either do like eight by eight, 16 bytes, 16 bytes, either eight or 16. Am I really going to be too bothered about like, you know what? Okay, whatever. Just max it out at two in you in 64s, realistically. So. <clears throat> 
or two UN32s for now. Just just for the testing stages. I'll figure it out later. So what I want to do is set size of ID. ID part, I guess. I'd have to do this all over the place, wouldn't I? That is not good. So actually, realistically, what I want to do is I want to... Uh, I do want to have a function here somewhere that does like two... that reads and writes the dang thing. One of these. Okay, let's grab that. 2022. UCS binary H. Don't I actually have this already for writing out this index? Or am I just I'm just writing out the, the struct itself, aren't I? Or something. Oh no, I'm doing it manually. Yeah, okay, that's not that's not a viable long-term plan. I got it manually in the exporter somewhere. Like up here. Export index data. Yeah. I'm doing it. Yeah, no. That's not gonna work in the end. That one, okay. We're gonna do binary read uh, resource ID. They need to remain separate because they will be changing probably in the future and splitting up. This stuff will be available somewhere. I must, I have to have a reference implementation somewhere. Here we go. I've got the ID, so it's just something like this. Um, thing like that for both entity ID. All right, and we need this. Need that. A 
want that. We want the source side. C? I can probably do it with C. Yeah, just C. Give me these, please. Add the compilation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll just get a nice reference implementation here. Perhaps not one quite so, yeah, whatever. When reading, I can say I need, okay, if uh, star p read size is less than, let's say, 8 bytes, I think. Size of O group, ID group, plus size of O ID index. Yeah, that's how we will do it. It's the composite of those two. If it's greater than, if it's less than those, then we're going to return in sufficient buffer size, kind of. Okay, we'll use the uh, just kind of use that. Otherwise, we go ahead and start reading. So actually, if I can, I don't need to do mem copy for a lot of things, do I? No, no, I don't. Hmm. Well, that's something for the refinements next time. But once this gets kind of done. Okay. Hate realizing that, like when you're so far along, you realize, oh, I don't actually need all this. Okay, so fo full ID group star equals p read buffer. O ID index equals O ID index star of P plus one, moving that up by one, and then Equals O create ID create which is star p group star p index and we're basic like that's so simple oh yeah and return success right. That's simpler than mem copy for sure. <laughs> Do the same thing for read entity ID. It's so small, I'm not even going to. You know what? No, we'll do that. You know what? No. Return binary resource ID, which is buffer size. It'll start warning me when they're not the same. Writing. Let's 
So I do a bunch of things. Is this read? This is read. This is write. Okay, here. Yeah, yeah. If the write buffer is null, that the write size equals this. Turn success. You don't know what null is? Really? And there we go. Otherwise, um, Star P, you know, kind of like this, basically. If P right size is too small, then we just save that. Star P group equals O ID get group of the ID, which is ID. ID get index of resource ID. Return success. Oh yeah, right size equals, it doesn't matter what we do here, it's always going to be that size. So we just kind of do this. Oh no, 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 not there. But at this point, yes. To be explicit about what we're doing. Make things easy, and then here we kind of do the same thing. So return, right, go into the ID. Okay, we've got these guys. These guys are exported. That's great. So what's going to happen now is first of all pick through that I haven't done anything terribly wrong. Great. We roll on down to the exporter. And we're going to do it's on the X it's Somewhere in here. Oh, ID group. Okay, you know what? It's only a few locations. Export resource data. The data. So I'm using this to grab the data, but not actually for the index data. That's here. Why not? Resource ID. This, this. And then I'm doing the same thing here. Okay, first of all, this is entity ID. So I'm, I got the data, it's copied somewhere, and then what I'm going to do with it 
I got the data here, export and export. And I go down here and for each the binary key, create. Here we go. Say eight at the moment. So we want this to be what binary right well resource ID is going to be the set dot ID. That that, and then we're going to be doing this. We need to include Buffer and buff size. This out. Okay, so buffer of something, buff size is eight. This is successful. Okay. Now, for the interesting one, which is what the hell do I do for persistent? Because obviously I don't want to put like the actual max value because I want this to be able to grow or shrink depending on any number of factors realistically. So perhaps what I want to do is I just set it to the max. You went 32 max, whatever the max value of the thing is. So let's do that. If, okay, mm. I know what this is, but uh, if When write no, first of all, when writing this is the place to write it. Place to write that. Okay, if if that Oh, and I don't want to convert it to the value, don't I? Oh, yes, that's true. If that equals that. So that's just a binary compare, because that's easy. Okay. Ones. So this basically start P group 
Axe, I think. Something like that. Otherwise, this becomes group value. Uh, get out of here. That. Why do you group to value? So that does down to UN32. That's great. So then when reading it, if then that means it's a persistent. Means it's oh no, I need to be able to do conversions. Right, 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 right. Right. Um Okay, if it's UN32 max, oh. else. Conversions, conversions, conversions. Uh, that's not going to work here. I need to find material mesh, material, I think, as it. Translator, here we go. It's not actually used. Okay. What? Why do I have it if I don't use it? I do not know. Oh, right, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I do use it on YAML, though, properly. That much I do know. Material, group translator, here we go. Okay, we just run right, right around to here. Okay. If it's group translator, we'll do that. So it's value to group. Okay, first of all, if equals that. If group Sorry, you went three to max. So this basically, yeah, basically becomes that. We're gonna have group translator, which is going to be bef just before the thing we return, like that. It's going to be like that. Need this. This is actually local to this. That's nice. If there's none, then it's basically a straight conversion. So with so if that then group equals so I be persistent group. Otherwise it's group because right now it's a value, so now I need to convert it from uh, that to to group. It's 
close that. Group value if group value. If it's not that, then we need to do this. Like that, okay. Otherwise, we have a translator, so what we want to do is we want to translate. Because <clears throat> basically this group trans, the group value to the group. If, okay, yeah, yeah, also, if, but that, and results, this may be changed if we go down here, if, Otherwise, this. It's not that, it's just the foe. We're doing a translation of a persistent group. Otherwise, we're translating of whatever the particular group was. Okay. Now I think that's right. Group return result. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Back to exporter. Where I was down here? No. Here. Okay, I'm writing it. I have the cases for persistent groups now. And for translating, okay. Flipping onto the import side, when I come to about here, the file ID, not sure why it's ID now. Get resource create info. I need the importer translator. Okay. Resource editor name, that's... That's not great. I want to... Okay, focus here. It's because this is the thing. I'm writing out the resource data. I'm getting a resource data here. This is the interesting part for now. That and that. Plus that. So this, right? Because that's that and that. File ID, resource ID. File resource ID. Great, we got that. Now we're going to read. Oh, that advanced the file. Okay, I need a buffer. I need to do this. Terrible.
Okay. Reading this. Once. From there. Then I need to do file resource ID. File. Auto result equals primary resource ID from the buffer, from the read size, the size, group translator being the importer. In this case, there is no yeah, there's no there's no translation here. Null handle. I need to include Okay. Let's see what we're doing. So there should be no like huge numbers. It should all be, you know, basically in the low tens or so. Why, why, why are you doing this to me? Git resource editor name, section size is not equal. Yeah, you're right about that. It's a bit larger, right? And that would have been a bit larger. Size of... What? Because I didn't do that in the editor name section, did I? Resource index offset. No, oh, no, this is the section I did it in. Because this is the point where we're just going through the indexes, yeah. Then the resource and the CI, the editor name and the CI stuff is down there. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, I've, I've screwed this part up. This plus... This buffer size, oh, hold on. Write out the resource ID and then the offset. Yeah, size of the That's how this works. Is the same thing as up here or down here somewhere. Here we source create info. That's great. Tree size right there. We do it up here. Yeah, okay, so I need to do the same thing here. Okay. Me. So we got that. Read size, rule fill, all this stuff. Get the index of the thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I was doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what's going on. Hmm.
Okay. I don't have a group translator. So I don't have one yet. Okay, cool. We're back here again. We got a problem which is saying something in here. Something else? Is it something in here that I'm mucking about? Offset. How do I calculate the offset? Set that offset. So this is the offset from the next section, right? Yeah, so that's fine. That's going to remain like that. That's fine. Okay. So I have a file resource ID, which is now this. Looks very wrong. No, it doesn't. Because it's the uh, top. Yeah, it's the top thing, isn't it? That's why. It's a persistent group. I wonder if it makes sense to kind of go the other way around. Group value is UN32 max. If it's null and group value not equal that, then fix it. Group value not group. Okay, then returns nothing because I didn't actually create the thing. Okay, now we're on to the next one. Okay, we're doing better. Whatever, we'll just keep going to this point. Great, we're here. If this equals... That is incorrect, isn't it? I'm expecting the fully translated thing. I'm just mucking it. Oh, you, I try, yeah. Cause I'm cheating, isn't it? An external file, file. yeah, 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 yeah. So, that or two that is what i'm looking for 
not the stupid thing that I've been, I've been doing. Oh, man. Little hacks trying to make things easier for me to read have been uh, getting me to go quite wrong. Okay, it's never the first one, it's like the second one. Yes. Okay. Got the stuff. Keep going great. Looking for external data, please. Okay. Data successfully exported. Can I now import it? Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yep. Uh, regenerate, rebuild, rerun. Come on. Oh, okay. Bit of a panic attack there, but ah, oh, okay. Not quite. This thing doesn't exist. Okay. What were we trying to load and where? Oh, I was trying to do this in a... Yeah, okay. I was asleep. Okay. Let us not do thing let's not try to load in parallel anymore let's find where that happens somewhere in here is the async task yeah So don't set the async task thing so it'll run synchronously or the same thread, same starting thread. That's not having a final time there, but okay. So we're here, we're trying to process this. We went in here to load. We tried the load task. We tried to go into here. We got nothing. Okay. So we're here. Try to load. We had a P resource of this. But it's just a whole lot of nothing because we had no create info. So it should have gone into here. Async to synchronous. Okay, let's just kind of do this then. We'll just go to this point, we'll just step through it. 
increment reference count going through we're going to load it create the task stuff these are the flags yes 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 task context great we got it all we're going to go in great Create info. This turns nothing. Okay, so this is the interesting point. Right here. Mm -hmm. This thing. Okay, so we don't have create info. We go in here. Want to increment uh, the resource reference count, and we're going to load all the loading tasks. Great. Here we're going to call the import function. Gets us here. Simulation. That's great. I'm going to go into the resource records in this case. <clears throat> What records do we even have? Do we have any? No, we do not. We never loaded any of them. That is not correct. So yeah, we return with nothing. We were supposed to. We never did. So as part of this, getting listed dependencies, sharing dependency importers, groups, dependency index data. At some point, the editor name. Here we go. So is this just a case where we just never actually successfully get this stuff out? would appear to be the case. Okay. Why? So we're looking at zero number zero or two or something like that. So this is the first, yeah. For ID one. Getting key maps, that's great. And everything, we move down to here, great. We read in the index, the uh, resource ID, the buffer. And then we are going to, ooh, translate it. Missing the translator, right. Do I just not have it? Importer. Yeah, you idiot. You always had it? Always had it. Nope. <laughs> Closer, I guess. Okay, so we're... Uh, 
close, 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 close. Import state. Here. Do we ever, act, do we actually hit this again? Like, ever? No. Okay. We are in a different location. So that's cool and all. Still not doing too great. Is it just... So we go down here, we're going to load task. In. I'm going to see that there's no create info here. I think we're going to load it. For where, what's, what's my ID? Quite high up. Right, let's see what's inside of here. We've got records. ID one, two, three. We've got 17. So we're going to go up to 17. And we're looking for who exactly? Who are we? What are we looking for? Render call. Vertex descriptor. One zero. We're attempting to render that. Requesting the load of the vertex descriptor. With this will have to this will be like so this is one. This is ID one. This isn't ID one. Where is it getting this other ID from then? Is Vertex Descriptor a type that uses? I don't think so. Vertex Descriptor. Right about here, resource IDs, and then that. Okay. Let's check out what this is going on for binary. Reading this thing is for binary. Hmm? I know it's using the incorrect parsers, but still.
That is indeed very wrong. Am I not? Hold on. I'm not in. Wait a second. When I read this. No, but again, like. Ah, curious. No, unless that was just. Is this the wrong location? Is this supposed to be here? Or am I just offsetting things incorrectly? No, 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 because it's the offset of that. Read size incre increased by that. Okay, so no, this is, yeah, no, this is correct. I read that, eight bytes, then I read or seek by another four bytes. That's the read size. No, that'll be, that'll be right. Okay, what about when I'm writing? Writing, writing, writing. You there. That's reading. This is writing. Okay. One, two, three, four. Vertex, tessellation, valuation, geometry. Count, count, shader, tessellation, geometry. And I do increment it correctly, because again, this is... not the right value that I think about it, because... Oh no, this is a faux ID. Whatever. Here, vertex shader. Is not the ID. It's the actual pointer. Why was it showing up as Poe ID a moment ago? Vertex descriptor create info P data. This object which is not here because it doesn't know what it is, that's why. It 
it's actually that. That's why I keep getting the weird numbers. Okay. <sighs> so I gotta... I gotta make a bunch of changes. I'm going... So what I'm, I'm going to... I'm done for tonight. What I'm going to do offline is I'm going to do a bunch of changes. I'm just going to re re uh, make all the binary things. I'm going to fix this uh, type thing here so that it actually re turns. Yeah, this thing thinks this is a faux ID type when it is very clearly not. This is a mistake on my part, isn't it? Hold on a second. When I did the docs, I did XML, faux graphics resource. I wrote that as faux resource ID. It is not faux resource ID. That's why. Not faux resource ID, it's faux resource. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to do this now. It's not, it's not that. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that. I need to, no. I'll, 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 yeah. I'll do it offline. I'll, I'll just fix this and I'll return after that tomorrow. So until next time, be, uh, you know, until next time, cheers.